ओटी विशेष साक्षात्कार कार्यक्रम को सब दर्शक को स्वागत करदीप साहू आज आम सहित कथबार्ता हाँपी अच्छा जुक्तराष्ट्र आमेरिकार आम्बेसडर श्रीजुक्त रिचर्ड वर्मा वेलकम टू आवर प्रोग्राम फ्रम अ विलेज टू इन पंजाब टू कैपिटल हेल इन यूएसए ऑब्वियसली इट हैज बीन अ वेरी लॉन्ग जर्नी फॉर यू हाउ डज इट फील टू कम बैक टू द कंट्री यू originally went from yes as as the ambassador of the country you adopted i will tell you it's it's a great privilege and an honor and i am very proud of my indian roots and i'm very proud of my family and i uh think about what my father and mother and grandparents uh went through during very difficult times in india and just really having to start uh, almost start over again in the united states and how they just worked so hard uh and the fact that i'm here is really a a long shot but it's also uh you know it's an american story and increasingly an indian story i do feel um a sense of obligation to help other people uh be able to fulfill their dreams as well the way um my parents ultimately were able to and and now for me what a what a terrific honor and how difficult or easy it has been to make the transition from us air force to law and then finally diplomacy now yeah yeah no it's a good question but you know i'd say for almost all of my career i've been interested or worked in the foreign policy and national security fields and legal fields and so uh they were very much related so i started my career serving in the military in the us air force as a air force judge advocate but i was focused on international law and national security law that's what i did in the private sector and in the senate and house uh as well working on national security issues at a very um senior level and assistant secretary at the state department and as an ambassador so i i view it as a, a continuation uh there's no um you know job description to being ambassador so i think you can come from a lot of different um backgrounds i think you just need to have the passion about the relationship and uh, to work uh very you know diligently on it each day and i'm i'm really committed to doing that i'm also really fortunate that we have a terrific team of of professionals US foreign service officers other from other agencies of our government but also great uh locally um uh, employed staff of indian nationals as well uh, obviously the indo us nuclear civil nuclear deal yeah. that was a game changer in us and india relationship what do you see as the next big thing coming in indo us relations it's it's such a good question and i was part of that civil nuclear deal uh working in the senate when it went through the senate in the first time in 2005 and i think uh just on civil nuclear i think we'll see uh, uh continued progress in 2016 which will be important you know there's so many areas of cooperation i don't know that there will be one big thing because there really are so many big things we're working on now we're working on uh fighter uh cooperation and carrier cooperation together in the defense uh space we're talking about joint production and joint development we're talking about uh coming together on clean energy and climate in a way that we haven't before we work together on space cooperation on the mars mission uh i think that's big potential you know we're doing work on cancer research on global health security so I could, you know, just coming out of the president's visit in January, there were 80 different initiatives, 80 different initiatives. Yeah. So, in each one of them in its own way is another civil nuclear deal. It's yeah. big in its own way. So, I I think um we're going to see a lot of different areas and and we're going to we continue to reach uh, new heights. Obviously, there are a lot of areas where India and the US can cooperate. But is there anything special any one thing that will give you the maximum satisfaction when you sort of lay down office here and go back and is there anything which will give you the maximum satisfaction if you manage to achieve that sure so you know one of the special privileges of coming when i did was that our president and prime minister have met probably five times in one year 
we had two summits just in a four month period. And when people ask me, what is your priority or what is your objective? I just have to look at what they agreed to do. And they set a very ambitious agenda for us. $500 billion in two-way trade, uh, broaden and deepen defense, cooperation in all areas, uh, support new solar and wind and biomass and civil nuclear cooperation. As I said, um, all these areas, that's what would make me satisfied, is if we continue to show great progress in all those areas, and if we meet the test that the President laid down, which is we want to be India's best partner. Not just a natural partner, we want to be India's best partner, and I think that's the course we're on. About two years back, uh, there was this Devjani Khobregodi affair, which was a bit of a sore point between the two countries. Right. How do we ensure that something like this doesn't happen again? Yeah, that's a, it's a really good question. Uh, because when you have two giant countries like we have, the world's two biggest democracies, that are also not the same countries, and we don't aspire to be the same countries, that we will run into differences, there will be bumps in the relationship, as there are with other uh, close allies of, of ours. The key is that we talk to each other a lot, that we have trust in the relationship so that when we have an issue, we can sit down across the table and solve it. And that's what I've seen the last year and a half, is that on issues that would have maybe had us stuck um, or even made us angry a year and a half ago, we're actually solving big issues, climate change, uh, hydrofluorocarbon reduction, uh, intellectual property. You know, we've made defense trade, we've made progress in areas people thought we were not going to make progress on, civil nuclear liability. So I think the key is continuing to stay lashed up, uh, continuing to talk, and just seeing the bigger picture, which is, okay, we may have a conflict here, but seeing that vision that the President and Prime Minister set, which is that best partnership, and that if India and the U.S. are the best partners, then the world will be the beneficiary the world will be a safer place, a more prosperous place, and that's what we have to be able to continue to see. Does being an Indian American help in uh, <laughs> avoiding this kind of a, a repeat or having smoothened the rough edges in the relationship? I, you know, I think you have to ask other people uh, that question. I, all I will tell you is that we have been exceptionally warmly welcomed across the country. You know, I've taken now uh, some 37 trips across the country, north and south, east and west, and regardless of where we go, uh, we're treated so well. And But I do think um, we have to work at the relationship and that you have to do all the complicated foreign policy and, and uh, diplomacy that goes into the relationship. And then to the extent our roots here are helpful, then I, then I, again, I leave that for other people to judge, but I will say that we, we've had just a, a terrific uh, first year. Indian Americans are obviously doing very well from what we gather through media reports and other uh, agencies, but uh, are there any people born in Odisha who are also doing well? How, what is the percentage of <laughs> Odias who have... Uh, settled in America and who are doing well. I Do think, you know any of them? I think, uh, of course, I've met a number of people from this uh, region in, in the United States and they're doing quite well. And But people from all parts of, of India, um, you know, are, are have, have gone to the United States. You know, we now have the largest number of, of Indians living outside of India are in the United States, over three million. And they are involved in every sector of society. And all the census and other factors suggest that they're the most educated and doing uh, quite well. What I tell people, though, is that we have to remember that not everyone has made it. And not everyone finds it easy when they end up in the United States. And that we have to, whether they're from South Asia, or whether they're from Eastern Europe or Latin America, you know, we have to continue to make sure um, 
that folks are given a shot to succeed the way my parents were given a shot. And that means standing up for people. And I know that's what the president is committed uh, to do. You interacted with the government of Odisha and some business leaders here. So have any areas emerged out of the discussions where uh, USA and Odisha can work together? Sure. We talked a lot about how do we increase trade and investment? How do we bring more American companies here? How do we bring more companies from ERISA to the United States? It's trying to increase that two-way trade that's so important. We talked about the great natural beauty and tourism potential here. We talked about the energy sector and the, re and, and the good renewable uh, targets uh, that we can help with here. Uh, we talked about all kinds of different areas. Like there any talk on the smart city project? Uh, we talked. We, we have talked a lot about infrastructure and smart cities, but we're you know we're a good partner with the government of India on the smart cities uh, initiative as well. So we covered a lot of ground today. Uh, the Odisha's first experience with an American company was with AES Corporation, and that was in the initial stages of the power reforms here, where Odisha was the pioneer in India, and the experience of Odisha hasn't really been very good with AES. Mm -hmm. They are caught up in litigation for long now. So so how do, how do we ensure that uh, these areas of friction, possible friction, are reduced to the minimum in future business relationship between US companies and Odisha? I think it's an it's a excellent question because I think the steps that can be taken to improve you know, what, let's just call it the ease of doing business in, in ERISA are not just applicable to American companies. They're applicable to Indian companies operating right here or companies from East Asia or from West Asia. I think, you know, all the companies and investors want a fair shot. They want legal certainty, tax certainty. They want regulatory burden to be low. They want uh, to be able to have good infrastructure and power and water and ports and airports. So, look, all those things, I think, um, are what each state in this country and our country as well are really competing to attract uh, the investment. I, I think we all have to work on in, in ensuring basically fairness in the system and n understanding that it's a very competitive en environment. We're all chasing the same... Uh, companies and investors and, and want that innovation and, and modern technology. So, But, um, you know, I saw the latest ranking. I think it was number seven in the country, which is very good, and I, I understand that there's a push to go even higher. You talked about ease of doing business here, right. and I'm sure you were aware that uh, land acquisition has been a perennial problem for big-ticket uh, industrial projects here. Primarily, it was the reason you know, some, some companies, big companies like POSCO and ArcelorMittal had to back off. So, are, were there any talks about uh, this particular aspect uh, of doing business? We, we talk generally about how land acquisition is one of those uh, ease of doing business factors and that Look, this is an issue that the central government, I know, has also uh, taken up, and it's a difficult issue. I would just, uh, again, encourage people to think about um, the competitive environment we're in uh, internationally and, and that, you know, we have to be fair to people and just to people, but you also want to make sure you have standards and a system of land acquisition that is competitive with other jurisdictions that you're competing against. So, uh, you know, it just came up in, in that context, but I understand it's a, a very difficult issue, but I think it, it's one that progress has to be made on. Was there anything other than business and sure. economy we talk, on your plate? Sure, while, uh, absolutely. We, we, you know, I, I had the great uh, privilege of going to uh, KISS and KIT today and to see these incredible students. And we talked about a lot about education. And again, I was able to share with them my own family experience where my parents started from very humble beginnings and it was through education that gave them uh, some the only opportunities that they were able to get. And that was a lesson instilled in me. So, 
this, you know, there, that's something which brings our two countries together is education and innovation and a commitment to learning. And I think we're, we're natural partners. We talked a lot about education, obviously the business issues. Um, you know, I think uh, next time I come back, there's a lot more we can talk about. Um, our security partnerships, our, our work on environmental matters, our, our work in science and innovation. All these subjects came up. But it, we just didn't have the chance to, to go into it the way I'd like to. But that's why I want to come back. I'm sure everyone in Odisha will look forward to your next visit here. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you. It's been a great uh, uh, honor to be with you and a, and a great honor to be with the, the people of, of this um, uh, great city and state today. Dekutile Juktarastra, America, Rastra Dutta, Sri Richard Barmanka Saito, OTB, Bises Sakhatkar Kajagramo. Namaskar.